This week for EMN5, we're going to talk about the approach to altered mental status. And one of the most important things in determining the etiology of a patient with altered mental status is getting a great history. But that's the whole problem, right? They're altered. You can't get a history from them. So one of the big things in these patients specifically is talking to other people to try to get a better history. So that might be talking to the paramedics that bring them in, maybe making phone calls to friends and relatives. If they're from a nursing home, definitely give the nursing home a call, see if anyone knows what's been going on. Uh, you can look through old hospital records, try to check their medications, maybe you can find some pill bottles. You can even use your resources like law enforcement and social work to try to get into their apartment and figure out what medications they're on or what their living situation is. So now that you have this person that's going to help you with the history, you have to think what questions are important in a patient with altered mental status. One big thing is going to be the timing. So did this happen over a couple hours or has this been going on for days and getting worse and worse? Other thing to ask about is associated symptoms. So is the patient coughing or having a fever, having vomiting, pain, complaining of neck stiffness, or were they depressed recently or having suicide ideations? Make sure you also ask about trauma. So have they had any falls recently or maybe were they just involved in a car accident? Asking about any recent hospitalizations, maybe surgeries that they've had or recent illness might give you a clue as to what's going on today. And make sure you ask about new medications or changes in dosing. That's especially important with the elderly. Obviously, if you can get some more past medical history, that can be very helpful. And make sure you ask about a psychiatric history as well. And one really important thing is to try to figure out what this patient's living situation is. Do they live in a nursing home or do they live by themselves? Are they homeless? All these things can give you clues into what's going on. So the next thing that's going to help you out is looking at their vital signs. And each of these different vital signs can help build your differential. So for example, you're going to take their temperature. We're looking for their uh, signs of infection, maybe environmental exposure, like if they were out in the cold or if they have heat stroke, any signs of uh, drugs or toxicity. The respiratory rate can give you information about an acid-base disorder or maybe an intracranial process. You can look at their heart rate and the EKG to look for signs of toxicology, maybe infection, definitely electrolyte abnormalities or head injury. Their blood pressure can tell you if they're in shock, uh, signs of infection, and make sure you check in oxygen. Now everything you find on your exam is going to be a clue to what's going on. So start at the top. Um, you're going to look at their head for signs of trauma. In addition to looking in their mouth for your assessment of the ABCs, their airway, you can also look for maybe signs of a toxicity, like maybe they smell like alcohol or have a fruity odor of DKA. Get a pupillary exam, see if they have a large thyroid or maybe a stiff neck. On your neuro exam, get a GCS and then look for any signs of focal deficits or maybe a cord injury. Lungs can give you a good clue into past medical history. For example, maybe they have crackles or wheezing, maybe they have a big barrel chest of emphysema, and their abdomen, look for signs of uh, infection or obstruction, perforation trauma, maybe they have distension and bruising, could indicate a ruptured AAA, and their heart, make sure they look for signs of arrhythmia, and their skin exam can be really helpful as well. So here you're looking for trauma, signs of atoxidrome. Um, you can also check their hydration status, so if they seem to be in shock, or check their temperature, look for signs of blood loss. And you can get past medical history, like if they're jaundiced or have edema, and you can also get some social history here. Uh, maybe they have track marks. Now for the differential, we use this mnemonic, A-E-I-O-U tips, to help us think through this really big differential for altered mental status. So here's a table that has A-E-I-O-U, and off to the side here I have a list of different testing that might be helpful for each of them. So A stands for alcohol or ammonia, so meaning a hepatic encephalopathy. For E, it's going to be electrolyte or endocrine abnormalities. There's a lot of different ones there that can cause altered mental status. For I, you can think through different iatrogenic causes, so for medication levels or toxicology. O is going to be for opioids, so for example, a heroin overdose or oxygen, meaning either just the primary hypoxia or maybe they've had a carbon monoxide exposure. And U stands for uremia. You can check a B1 level. For the TIPS part of the mnemonic, the first part is trauma or temperature. For I, think through infection. So this could just be from urosepsis or it could be something more central like a meningitis or encephalitis. For P, that's going to be uh, the psychiatric, so maybe a psychosis or a poisoning. So there's a lot of different overdoses you should think about. And then under S, it's going to be seizures, and then they also list here uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage or space-occupying lesions. So treatment is going to be going through ABCs, mostly supportive care at first. And one other thing you can think about for as far as medications to give in the first few minutes before you know what's going on is this mnemonic DON'T. So D stands for dextrose. A lot of people even in the field, EMS will have already given them an amp of dextrose if they're altered to make sure that they're, it's not just from a hypoglycemia. 
It would also probably give them oxygen. And then you could think about giving a dose of naloxone or thymine if you think this is a patient who might have had an overdose or is a chronic alcoholic. After that, you're going to start narrowing down your differential. You can give specific things like antibiotics or maybe a particular antidote. A couple of pitfalls to think through for altered mental status. One thing is just really not to narrow your diagnosis too quickly. This has a huge differential. So make sure and think broadly and don't clamp down on one idea too quickly. The other thing is failing to get a good history. It's so easy with these patients to just say, oh, they're altered, I can't get a history. Don't do that. Make some phone calls. Really try to get some history, which can help you determine the etiology of this altered mental status. So that's it for this week's EMN5. Here's some references. And thanks for joining us on the approach to altered mental status.